servant is going to be healed and appointed with the hypocrites and going to, where there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The other servant is going to be given vast responsibilities of leadership in the kingdom of God. Amen. It depends on what kind of servant you are. The question is asked, in verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant? I want to preach today, the faithful and wise servant. Father, bless us now as we preach this in Jesus' name, amen. Now, our theme for our men's conference has been, we are his male servants and that that particular text is taken from Acts chapter number 2 and, and Acts 2 and um, verse 17 it says and it shall come to pass in the last days saith God I will pour out of my spirit here's the key Upon all flesh. This is, this is a startling prediction. Astonishing is awesome. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Dealing with family. Your young men and old men shall. Your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And then he says this as he shifts to a social setting, socially speaking. You see kinfolk, sons and daughters. You see old men and young men. But then he moves in a social arena and says, and on my dolos, dolos, servants, dolos, slaves, bond slaves, Slaves whose desire, interest in life, goals and thoughts uh, becomes that of or those of their master. You lose your identity in your master's identity. He says, and on my servants and on my handmaidens. A handmaiden, ladies, is a female slave. God says, even on them will I pour out, uh, in those days, will I pour out in those days of my spirit. And he says this, and they shall prophesy. Prophesy here is not necessarily foretelling, but it is to preach the gospel. It is to declare God's truth by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. These words of Joel were quoted by Peter to explain what took place on the day of Pentecost because the viewers thought that the people were drunk the attendees of Pentecost we've talked about this they thought that they were drunk and Peter stood up and said they're not drunk um, in verse 15 he said it's for no other reason it's 9 a.m. in the morning <laughs> it's too early to be drinking <laughs> but he says this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel in Joel chapter number uh, two, and uh, Joel gives this powerful prophecy, and in verse 28, he says, it, it shall come to pass afterwards 
that I will pour out my spirit, and here it is again, upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. And also, and also, upon my servants, that is, uh, the Hebrew word is eved, which means a laborer, a servant, a worshiper. In the Jewish community, the Hebrews could own slaves, but the Hebrew could only, um, all of the slaves were, I rephrase this, they were indentured. No one were slaves indefinitely. If you read at your leisure sometimes, Exodus chapter 21 and verse 2, and also verse 14 and 20 also lets you know that the slaves had rights. And if you would uh, harm a slave or kill a slave, you would be put to death. According to Exodus 21 and verse 2, six years was as long as an indentured servant could serve. It's interesting that God used this word. The prophet Joel used the word eved. God says also on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Why is this so significant? It's significant because it shows that Jesus Christ is for everyone. That you don't have to be a part of, uh, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to be an aristocrat. You don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your life, in your mouth. You don't have to be born with a spoon at all for Jesus Christ to love you and for God to make his spirit available to you. And in the Old Testament, this is, very, this is, a, this is a sea change here because in the Old Testament, the only people who could get the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit was primarily uh, given to kings and priests to prophets, and for those who occupied official positions in the theocracy of Israel. So my brother, a regular guy, could not get the Holy Spirit. And you've seen in the Old Testament where uh, Samson didn't walk in the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit would come upon him. And we, you remember when the Holy Spirit came upon Saul, the Bible says, thou shalt become another man. You remember the prophet David, when David said to the Lord, cast not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Kings, priests, and prophets could either have the Holy Spirit to come upon them or have the Holy Spirit. But the Holy Spirit was not made available to the common man. One of the reasons this should mean so much to you is even according to our church doctrine, we believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. Regeneration, that is for the Holy Ghost to revive us, for the Holy Ghost to redo things in our spirit and reset us is absolutely essential because life takes its toll. Things happen in life. Am I right, preacher? Life can hit below the belt. And you need something stronger than yourself to reset. You know, we have talked of late and I talk quite a bit and about uh, just the fellowship that we have with the writers. And we all know what it's like to have to get a second win. And some of those guys are so crazy that you need a third win and a fourth win to even keep up with them. But your body will regenerate. It will reset. And it's as though you, you, you've come alive again. That's the way the Holy Spirit works. Life takes its toll. Death happens. Sickness happens. Disappointments happen. COVID happens. Things happen. The Holy Spirit, this is why every believer should want to be filled. The Holy Spirit knows how to reset you where it is as though those things have never happened. You still know that they've happened, but your energy has been restored. Your get up and go has been placed back in you. 
I see many of the saints, and many of the saints have no energy. Amen. You, some of us need to check our diets, and you need to exercise. Less, you, you lethargic, and you walk like your legs are heavy. You move your arms like your arms are heavy. Many times, some of you, you can't stand long. You got to lean on this. and lean on. Let God revive you. Let the Lord, let the Holy Spirit regenerate you and put some energy uh, back in you because life keeps going. And, 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 and you know what? Praise the Lord. Uh, he'll revive you because if he doesn't revive you, guess what? There's another challenge around the bend. See? We're either in a trial, his life, just coming out of one or about to go into another. Challenges. And the Holy Spirit will revive you and reset you where you are able to handle it. Our, the point of our conference is that as men, we, we, we said to God, Lord, we don't have to be uh, so high on the totem pole to be, uh, if, if it's all right, you know, we don't have to be the sons. We have to be the daughters. We, have to be, we, have to, we don't have to have some great name. You know what, Lord? We'll just be your servants. We're happy to be in the kingdom. I'm, I'm just glad that I have a seat at God's table. It doesn't have to be the chief seat. Praise the Lord. As a matter of fact, I don't even need a seat at all. David said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I know that when the Lord saved me, he reached down. Praise the Lord. He reached down the social scale. Praise the Lord. I know when he saved me, he, he, didn't, he didn't reach in the, in the nicest part of town to find me. Amen. He found me though. He, he found me. I, I just love him for finding me. He went looking for me. I didn't go looking for him. He found me. Everybody who's saved, you're saved because the Lord found you. You know, we sing, I found Jesus, but you really didn't find Jesus. Every one of us are responding to Jesus. Jesus' initiation. Jesus made the first move. He found me. Found me, praise the Lord. A loving mother, I'm so glad she's still here in the land of the living and doing well. But he found me. She was doing the best as she could, but he didn't find us in a mansion. He didn't find us in the finer parts of, uh, uh, of Richmond County. It was, wasn't found in a household where there was money to spare. It was found uh, with an impressive pedigree. But with all of those things not being present he still loved me enough to find me. So I don't mind being the Lord's dolos. Because he said this, whether you are a dolos, a young man, an old man, a son or a daughter, I am going to pour out of my spirit. And I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And I'm going to make the Holy Spirit available. It doesn't matter how broke you are. doesn't matter your education. doesn't matter, praise the Lord, uh, uh, whether you are connected or not. The Holy Spirit is for you. No one should ever ask, well, do I have to be uh, filled with the Holy Ghost? You should be saying, God, what do I need to do to have your Spirit operating on the inside of me? Because I know that I need him. Because if I, if, I, if I didn't need him, he would have never made him available to all flesh. So that's the answer to that question. Well, do I need the Holy Spirit? Is he available to all flesh? The answer is yes. Yes, we need him. And you should want to have God, the Holy Spirit, abiding on the inside. As a, born, as a Protestant Christian, we believe that when a man comes to Christ, Jesus saves him and forgives him of his sins. And God the Holy Ghost, through Jesus Christ, comes set up residency in that man's heart right then and there. You are saved. You are as saved right then when Jesus saves you as you will ever be. 
thank God. And then after getting saved, you began on a trek called sanctification. That is, you begin to unlearn all the wicked stuff. And learn to do all the righteous things. Because your spirit has been made righteous the very moment you got saved. See, Jesus saves your spirit. So now your spirit is sanctified. Uh, Righteousness is assigned to you. Now we began to work on becoming what we are on the outside. Becoming on the outside what Christ made us through faith on the inside. Amen. Amen. That process is called sanctification. And to be able to get the power to continue to do these things and to live because when you get most of us, you know, aren't going to get saved. And I'm glad we're not, we don't have a deathbed confession. We got saved and we've been living since then. Well, if you're going to stay with the Lord, and if you're going to carry on, then you're going to need to have God, the Holy Ghost, operating on the inside. The Holy Spirit is a keeper. The Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth. The Holy Spirit is Christ coming back in us. Jesus says, I'm going away, but I will come back to you. He comes in us through the agency of the Holy Spirit. And every believer should want the Holy Ghost since he is made available to every believer. Every man needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. So that you can lead your family right. So that you can teach your children right. So that you can discern properly the things that are going on in society. You need, we need to be where we can discern what's going on in our sons and our daughters. We need to be able to, to discern what's going on in our homes. That man needs to know how to pray to protect his home. Know how to pray to protect the boundaries of his property. Instead of most of our men being prayer warriors, most men don't even attend church. It's a shame. I take pride in the fact that my wife has never had to convince me to come to church. Praise the Lord. I got that. I have the Holy Ghost. I get, when the alarm goes off, I get me up. I kiss her on the way out the door. Baby, I'm gone. Where are you going? To the house of God. You don't want to be the kind of man who you struggle with doing what's right. Amen. You don't want to be the kind of man who complains that church service is too long. You didn't complain about that basketball game last night and set up late. I know why you're tired. You wanted to see UFC to see who's going to win those fights. Now, isn't it amazing we have energy for everything? Everything. Have energy for everything but the house of God. Ah, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Men, men miss church to watch a football game. Somebody asked me, would you uh, uh, miss a Sunday service to go to the Super Bowl? I told him, no. I don't see the Super Bowl player missing that that game to come hear me preach. I think just as much of what I'm doing as they think of what they're doing. I'm a preacher. A game ain't going to have any effect on your soul. How you respond to what I'm saying right now. Is going to determine your eternal destiny. Woo! That's heavy. That's heavy. That's heavy. God's man. God, every man want to be filled with the Holy Ghost so he can make us strong. It takes strength to be a man. These little boys up here in the baby section, the little boys have to make a leap. That little girls don't have to make. The boy and the girl live in the security, a perfect environment in the womb of the mother. When they are given birth, both are blessed. Mama sits there and holds her daughter or she holds her son. Long stares take place between mama and children if she breastfeeds then that's another connection if she if she doesn't then just holding the bottle babies if you notice they stare they look into your eyes so the boy and the girl grow and develop a strong emotional attachment 
to the mama. And God designed it so. But at a certain point, the little boy has to make a break from his mother to cross over into becoming like his daddy. See, see, he, he, he has to now, as a, as a little tyke, he don't even know his name, now he's got to become because trying to grab hold to masculinity. That's a huge, huge leap. And it's one that the little boy really struggles with when there's no daddy at all. How does he make the break? How does he make the break from mama? From feminine, from the effeminate world to trying to grab hold now to what's in his daddy. And dads need the Holy Ghost so that they know how. I'm going to preach in a minute to help that boy make that leap. I was impressed big time by the barley boys yesterday out there at the camp. They got spunk. And then one of them told me, uh, I said, so I guess you barley's are just going to be good at whatever you do. He said, yes, sir. And then one of them looked up at me and told me, I'm going to be a preacher. Hallelujah. Now, you know that got me right. You, <laughs> praise Lord. They're, they're out there looking at all them athletes and coaches and all that. I'm going to be a preacher. I said, oh, that's my boy. My man right there, what, Malachi, Malachi, that's my guy right there. I saw him, that's right, stand up. I saw him Sunday, uh, Saturday night, Friday night, and uh, I like that black suit. And, and I like that look today, man, you killing, and you should have seen him yesterday, and I was so impressed. I got, some, I got, I got, I got the scene, he got a nice picture with him and the man, you know, I'm the man, standing there together. And have y'all, you know, I'm having a ball with this. And but I'm proud of him because he's a he, he's a fine young man, and he wants what God has for him. Keep up the good work, young man. I'm proud of you. And so many other boys I can talk about who who are putting forth that effort. You know, you my guy. Praise the Lord. I love Joshua. These guys who are trying. Amen. Who are right there putting forth their because everybody didn't come up in a perfect situation. Some just came up. And, and, and God somehow. That's why I love that man sitting back there in that shirt right there. Amen. Hal Stewart. God somehow provided. For me, God gave me. See, I'll never forget seeing my daddy, never. But in the in between, God gave me two men. One's in heaven, and the other's still here. And I guess that's one of the reasons why I'm like I am. See, because you know God knows how to make you. See, because the two men that God gave me, one was black, and the other's white. See, I got an education. That's why I'm not easily pulled into directions because there's some things you can't, you can't, you can't tell me. Now, you're not going to convince me that everybody who's white hates me. You can't do that. Because that man right there, that man right there, that man loved me like I was his own son. And not just me, all of the guys. He got in trouble with his, wife, with his wife over us. We had to get home. And we had no way home. And there was nobody to come get us. And uh, he had a car. And he said, take my car. The preacher, I'm going to give you the car. You bring it back. And the car was a straight. I'd never driven a straight before. But we got home. And we got the car back. 
And just so many, I, I, I'll never forget one of the greatest life lessons he gave me. And I'm going to move on with preacher. I know I'm running long. I'm running long. But I, I want to share this. We were playing Gastonia Ashbrook. Um, and we beat him good. See, because Coach Stewart was a hard-nosed coach. Um, and he didn't take any tea for the fever. Told us from day one, if you're a senior and you don't start, I'm going to cut you. Love That'll make you start. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you got any dog in you, That's right. so you're going to scrap for that Love position. The they fed us afterwards. They fed us after the game. Now, I'm going to be honest. The food was lousy. <laughs> Coach was walking through and he says, when you finish eating, I want you to thank everybody. Thank them for the food. Big mouth me. Uttered under my voice. I didn't think he would hear me. I said, for what? <laughs> and uh, uh, the Lord let him hear it. He said, preacher. So on Friday night. He said, let me see you. I'll see you Monday. See me Monday. He had a lesson for me on being grateful. By the time I crawled to my feet after that 100th breakdown, we didn't start the breakdowns till after practice. I thought I had gotten away. I thought he forgot. Preacher, come here. Yes, sir, coach. I'm going to teach you how to be thankful. And he stood right there. And we started counting. Oh, I was ready for the first 10. You run in and play, boom, hit the ground, jump up. Boom, hit the ground, jump up. Boom, hit the ground, jump up. Oh, I got it. All right, 20. <laughs> hit the ground, jump up. 30. Now, you, you know, you're getting up. 50. I'm thinking, he's crazy. Keep going. Boom. All right, by 70. You're grabbing your own body. To get you up. Sand is everywhere. Did I say everywhere? Everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. By the time we hit number 100, he left me laying there. You know what he said? Now the next time, be thankful. It has stayed with me all my life. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I talk all the time about my pastor. And the life lessons that he gave me. God gave me two fathers. One white. One black. And it shaped my view of things. And I'm too old to change now. I know, too, I, I know better. Y'all don't like my preaching, do you? Fathers, you need the Holy Ghost. Brother Ferguson blessed us so. We nicknamed him yesterday. We called him the mannequin. You go to Dick's Sporting Goods over there where they sell the Under Armour stuff. You see those great big mannequins over there. He looks just like one of those mannequins. I told him you ought to go over there and make a commercial and then start walking. They said the mannequin is walking. <laughs> he's a good man. Married into the Faison family. Married Crystal. And he's doing everything that he said. It's a good man. Indeed. I can start talking about all of oh, uh, Brother Williams over there. And I can just start talking Brother Hurst. Let me tell you, yes. you need the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Ghost makes you a better father. Yes, the Holy Ghost equips you. And, and you know what he does? He tells your dad when it's time to pray. Yes, sir. To pray. Yes, sir. And, and, and the Holy Spirit won't let you be, be the kind of man who hit and miss in church. Yes, so that's right. part of the problem. All over the place. You don't even have come to church. And you sending your children to church. When you have the Holy Spirit. Spirit filled men lead their families to church. Praise the Lord. You get up. You say, come on. Let's go. I'm on my way. Going to the car. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Ain't no. Uh, well, I, Do I have to go this Sunday? My children, you know my children never asked me that. It was a gift. We're going to church. Ain't no, ain't no 
discussion on that. Is it Sunday? I'm, I'm taking too long. But let me, let me, let me go ahead on and uh, see, you need the Holy Ghost. And then on, praise the Lord, you all all right? Okay. And on uh, uh, Thursday night, we talked about the proper attitude of the church worker. The proper attitude is that of being an unprofitable servant. Jesus said that you should call yourself after you have done everything he tells you to do. Jesus said you should call yourself an unprofitable servant. Unprofitable literally means God, you do not owe me anything extra. It means that you should approach the Lord in a spirit of unworthiness. See, we are so filled with ourselves now that we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to. You should be grateful to be in church. You should be grateful to have an opportunity to be used of the Lord. You should be grateful that God has selected you to be used of him. And when we come before the Lord, we don't come before the Lord with trophies. No, you don't approach the Lord saying who you are and what you, can, what you got and what you can do. No, no. You come before the Lord saying, God, I'm not even worthy. I know that the Lord took this unworthy man and placed him before you. Let me, let me preach so we can go home. He asked, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Faithful. 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 Who, who is able to continue? Who will stick with it? Uh, why did he say faithful and wise? See, it takes wisdom to know how to deal with the delay. See, many of us, many of us would make it if the Lord would come back sooner. The question is, can you deal with the delay? Paul said in Galatians 5 and 7, you did run well. Who did hinder you? Anybody can backslide. Anybody can stay saved for a while. You're not talking. I'm not impressed. You were saved and you were saved for five years, then you quit. You were saved for 10 years, but you quit. You was running for the Lord, but you ain't running now. Oh, yeah, I used to be doing this and that for the Lord, but you don't do it anymore. Anybody can quit. Doesn't take any wisdom to quit. Doesn't take power to quit. Anybody can drop out. Yeah, I used to go to church, but I don't go anymore. All right, then. Uh, you're not wise. The wise servant is the servant who says to God, I want to be a lifer. I want to serve you until you come to take me home. Are you listening to me? It takes nothing, Facebook Live, YouTube Live, to run for a minute, to carry on for a while. Oh my, but it takes something to get in this thing and to stay here until Jesus comes. Or until you die. He wants to know who then is that wise servant whom the Lord have made ruler over his household. The household of God, according to 1 Peter chapter 5, the household is the church. Is the church. Is the body of Christ that is in the world. And God wants to know who is that faithful servant that I put over my church and his job is to give them meat in due season. My job is to feed you the word of God. Preachers are giving the churches today everything but Bible. 
And the, 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 the goal of the minister is to feed the people the word of God and the servant that God is looking for is not the servant who is trying to be popular or trying to be famous, but the servant who is simply trying to be obedient. God have not called us to get the most likes. God have not called us to be the most popular on social media. God have not called us to... Fame, God have called us to being faithful. Who is that servant who will feed God's people? Hallelujah. Who will give them the word of God. And then he speaks of blessing. He says, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. This is my prayer. When you come back, Lord, whenever it is, I want to be found still on fire. I want to be found still shouting. Amen. Still carrying on. Unless I'm too old to. I want him to find me with my the same love for the church. I don't understand these preachers who, who preach against the church. And the preachers now preaching against the things of God while they embrace BLM. While they embrace the world. They embrace Hollywood but they preach against the church. I want to be one of those who can answer 50 years from now. If somebody asks me, are you still preaching? I want to be able to say, yes. Are you still in Christ? Yes. Do you still attend church? Yes. Are you still at your church? Yes, yes, yes. I'm still holding on. Yes. Praise the Lord. You ran well. Who did hinder you? Who got in your head? What happened? Who could talk you out of Jesus? What happened to you to make you lose your joy where you can't get it back? What person had, did you allow to have that kind of effect on you? Shame on you if you let somebody do that to you. Because Jesus is coming back looking for that servant whom he will find still carrying on in his name. God give me strength to carry on. God give me strength to preach on. God give me, give me strength to pray on. Give me strength. And I tell you, he has kept me from 1977 until now. And I believe that if he's able to do that, then he's able to keep me until he comes. And I don't know how he's going to come for me. There's only a few ways he can come. He may return in the rapture. I want to be found doing. Yeah, in the second coming, I want to be found doing. Or death can come and get me. I want to be found doing. However he chooses to get me out of here, I want to be found doing. Or at least I have it on record that as for as long as I could, uh, I, I would have loved uh, Sister Keisha to be able uh, to have words. I, I didn't say much. I, I just prayed. But I would love to be able to tell him, you know, uh, Evangelist Peggy White, you, you want to know what the walk away, the takeaway story is? As long as she could. She did. That's the story. As long as I could. As long as I had the ability. I did it. Praise the Lord. And when I couldn't do it anymore. I left on record. I did. When I could. While I could. The Bible is right. I thank God for that. The Bible says remember your creator. In the days of your youth. Before the evil days come, before you get too old where you can't serve no more. But I thank God, I thank God. My goal is to serve him until he comes. And he told me that if I just hold on and be faithful. I'm talking about serving. That's the, see, that's why we had to serve him through COVID. That's why we had to keep going when they declared us non-essential. 
This is why we came to church when other preachers stayed home and put on their robes and sat by their fireplace and got their coffee and gave their people a little sermonette. Shame on you. There are those of us who understood that we're, if we go down, if we go down, praise the Lord, if we go down, we go down with our boots on. If we go down, we go down fighting. If we lose, let me die on my shield. Amen. Never, never will we wave, wave the white flag of surrender because there is no surrender in the child of God. The Bible says, be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Why? For as much as you know that your labor, I feel something here, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, that puts something in you. God give me strength. How many want the Lord to give them strength to keep going? Broken heart, but keep going. Hurt feelings, but keep going. Lied on, but keep going. Misunderstood, but you ought to keep going. Yes, sir, if they run me out the side door, I'm coming in the back. Run me out the front door. I'm coming in the side. Ain't nobody going to run me out the church. Made up my mind a long time ago. I'm staying in the church. Seem like to me in every church, there's always someone anointed to make your stay hard. And the, uh, it's not the devil in them. It's your test. And you got to learn how to overcome it and to serve God anyhow. And God want to know, am I worth it? He said, blessed is that servant that when I come, I'm going to find so doing. And he said, hallelujah, I'm going to give him vast responsibility when he get on the other side. But he said, but if that evil servant says in his heart, the Lord is not coming. If that evil servant say, yes, Jesus may come, but he's not going to come today. And that servant loses his state of readiness. And notice what it says. And he began to smite his fellow servants. Have you noticed how many preachers have dropped the B-I-B-L-E? Have traded it in for the C-D-C? Have you noticed the amount of preachers who have stopped preaching Jesus? And they're going to preach in Fauci. And they call the rest of us crazy because we took Jesus' words over Tony's words. And the enemy, you see, when you begin to fraternize with the devil, the first thing you do is you begin to criticize the church. The church becomes your enemy. Then you begin to act like the world. The text says he began to drink with the drunken. That is, he began to act like the lost, behave like the ungodly. God have not called us to act like the world, but he's called us out. He says, come ye out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you and you shall be my sons and daughters. Hallelujah. It's popular now to preach against the preacher who still believes that God is a healer and that God is a keeper. I've never heard so many church folk say during COVID, I know what the Bible says, but honey child, you got to have some sense. You got to be reasonable. Well, isn't it reasonable to trust God? Isn't it reasonable to take God at his word? He said, I am, I am your keeper. David said, he is my shepherd. Hallelujah. And the Lord promised us that 10,000 would fall at our right hand, but it would not come nigh thee. He promised us that he wouldn't let the sun smite us by day, nor the moon by night. He promised and said, Lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. I don't think it's crazy to believe what God says. 
I don't think it's crazy to take God at his word and he promised never to leave us never to leave us alone but when you uh, lose your concentration and you lose your consecration and you say to yourself the Lord is not coming back he's not coming right now and you begin to get drunk with the drunken you drink the Hollywood Kool-Aid you drink the world's Kool-Aid you drink the world's doctrine and you turn on the saints sin leads to more sin now you are an evil servant and the Bible said that Jesus is going to come back at a time when that evil servant is not looking for him and he said he's going to cut him off and send him to hell but I'm asking Jesus Lord keep me in these last days I don't know how long it is before you return but here's what I know I know I want to make it how many want to make it all the way I didn't come out here to go 90% of the way I didn't come out here to get 95% I want a hundred too many people drown at the shore they spin they swim the whole ocean they swim the sea and there there's the beach there there's the dry land and they lose out just before they get there the devil is a liar I want the Lord to revive me hallelujah it's late in the evening the sun is going down soon and very soon we're going to see the king but oh oh lord give me power give me power to run again lord give me power to keep on doing to keep on fighting to keep on striving do you want power power to get a second win power to have that spirit of refreshing that comes from the presence of the Lord hallelujah if you want that power just lift your hands and cry loud to me anoint me Lord strengthen me Lord feel me Lord feel me feel me feel me that's right go on and cry out to him feel me Lord hey give me power to outlast the enemy, to outlast my trials, to outlast the devil. He's trying to change my mind. He's trying to get me to break. But saints, ain't no breaking in the saints. We are, we are Jesus' pride. We are Jesus' people. We are. Saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, and that with a mighty burning fire, and the fire gives us power to keep on keeping on. The road gets rough, the going gets tough. running in your feet clapping in your hands say yeah say yeah Lord Woo. yes sir somebody praise him if you will Woo. I'm going to tell you something and what 
what I'm going to tell you. I want you to sit down if you're ashamed. I'm going to, in a minute, I'm going to ask the cameras to span the crowd and let folk, let the people see those who have Jesus pride. The Lord and let them see those who are not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Ah, let them see those who say, ain't no stopping me now. Say yeah, 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 yeah no. Let them see them. Let them see the saints praising God. I'm a proud to identify there you go. Look at that Facebook. Look at that YouTube. The saints of God. We're going forth in the praise. We're going forth letting the world know that we are not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God under salvation to every, every, every man that believes. Say I, say I, Allah. One Sunday morning, he laid his hands on me and he gave me joy. He gave me power. He gave me peace. And here I am. Still running, here I am, still serving, here I am, say yeah, say yeah. If you got Jesus pride, just lift both hands and begin to wave them to the Lord. And lift your voice. Hallelujah. Now I need you to just begin to shout. I'm going to make it. Keep on saying it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Through the storms. And through the rain. Since this is supposed to be a men's conference, to praise the Lord, uh, can I get a few women to help the men praise the Lord? Ooh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. 